Hi, so today we make a warm chocolate mousse with some whiskey butter caramel. So we start off with the caramel first, so 225 grams of sugar. In the medium to low heat, so it starts to slowly caramelize. Then we're gonna have here, we start with chocolate mousse part next. So 275 grams of dark chocolate. You have 225 cream. So what we need to do is bring the cream to boil first. So we got this going. And while we're waiting for that, keep the sugar moving lightly so it doesn't burn in the corners and caramelizes evenly. We put a little pinch of salt as well with the sugar. We put the cream for the caramel in a separate pot at the front. And then we just wait and come with temperature. So with the chocolate mousse, like I said, you have 275 chocolate, dark chocolate, 60 to 70% chocolate. You have egg whites, 225 grams. So the process is we wait until the cream to come up to boil. And when the cream comes to boil, we pour it over the chocolate, emulsify it with a hand blender, and then we add the egg whites into it, placed in the icy cream whipper bottle, and uh, charge it with gas then, and keep it in a warm place while the caramel is coming. And the thing is not to stir your sugar too much because it will crystallize as well. So you just leave it to come naturally to like caramel. Okay, now the caramel started to be golden brown, about 180 degrees. We add the butter. So that's 20 grams of butter going into the caramel. And you give it a stir and dissolve the butter into the caramel. After that, we follow in with whiskey, 25 mils of whiskey. And mind yourself with that, it steams a little bit and splutters. Give it a good stir. And then follow it in with your warm cream. Stir it so make sure it's fully dissolved. Your sugar and your butter and your cream. And it emulsifies together to a rich golden caramel like that. Now simmer it for about 30 seconds. Meanwhile, we can add a little pinch of about 1.52 grams of sea salt. So you have a little salty caramel with whiskey through it. And now I lower the heat here a little bit and I leave it simmer for 30, 40 seconds more. Meanwhile, we bring up the cream to boil. And um, this is for the chocolate mousse itself. So what I'm doing now is the cream is coming to a simmer. So it's about 60 degrees, 7 degrees. Give it another 30 seconds and we add the butter into the cream base. Now, as you can see, it's steaming. So 65, 70, we add the butter. So 20 grams of butter into the cream. Once again, small pinch of sea salt into your cream. And now we wait until the butter is melted fully into the cream. After that, we're gonna bring the chocolate over here. When it comes to boil, I'm gonna start whisking the chocolate into the base. So now it's starting to come up. Butter is nearly fully dissolved. I'm gonna add the chocolate now into the boiling cream. So you get thick, glossy, chocolatey ganache like that. And you can see the shine on it there. So that's now fully dissolved and you get a texture of a thick chocolate ganache, so it's shiny and glossy. And I keep whisking it until it's fully dissolved. And now when we have it at this stage, I'm gonna add the egg whites into it. So 225 grams of egg white going in next. And we're going to use a hand blender to mix the egg whites into the chocolate. And make sure it's fully incorporated the egg white into the base.
So now, essentially what you have here is something that looks like a really thick chocolate sauce. So next stage is we get this in a bottle. And as you can see, it's still quite warm, and that's important. And then we're going to add the lid, make sure the seal is tight. And then we're pushing the gas capsule into the bottle. And a second one. And now it's charged with two gas. So now I give it a good shake. And next stage, then we go back to the whiskey caramel. So we put a little bit at the end of the glass. It's still quite hot. Normally you leave it cool down a little bit longer, so it's a bit more thicker and viscosity is better on it. And then what we do is I just double check this for, so it doesn't splash on me. Yeah, it's coming out quite fine. So we finished off with the warm mousse. And you get kind of a little chocolate trifle effect there. So normally what you do is just finish it off with a little bit of sea salt. And a little touch of olive oil. So about a teaspoonful, just drizzled on top. And there you go. I'm Mark Moriarty and I'm delighted to be down here in Kildare today cooking for their Taste of Christmas. You can follow them on intokildare.ie. We're making a very simple recipe today which is a potato dauphinoise, so perfect for your Christmas dinner. You can throw it together, you can have it in the fridge and enjoy it at the Christmas dinner. First things first, I'm going to stick a little bit of water into a pot uh, and then we're going to add our two first ingredients. So what we have here are cream and milk. Uh, equal quantities of both, we have about 500 mils of each and they can just go in top of your pot. The reason why I've added a little bit of water in there is because what can sometimes happen, especially when we add potatoes, is the protein will start to caramelize on the base and you get that horrible blackened uh, base of the pot which is horrible to clean and it also gives a bit of a burnt taste to the, the finished potatoes which we don't want. Next thing that's going to go in, I'm going to turn the heat up pretty much high because we want this to come to the boil is I have six potatoes here. They've just been peeled and they've been sliced pretty thin. So about half a centimeter thick is what you're after. Don't be afraid if they're a little bit thinner than that, but definitely not any thicker. So they're gonna go in with our cream and our milk. And the key to making a nice dauphin was, is we are going to bring them up to the boil in the cream and milk. So what will happen is the potato starch, which is obviously in the potatoes, uh, will thicken up and make, almost make a ready-made sauce in the pot which will then mean you won't have those watery potatoes at the end. It's important as well that we don't get too far ahead. We don't want to peel and slice the potatoes and have them in water because what happens then is you actually lose all the potato starch into the water and you'll end up with a watery dough from us at the end. That's in there now. I have it hopefully coming up to the boil so it's going to come up nice and slow. Our water should protect it on the base there. But while it's coming up, we're going to season it up. So for our six potatoes and our liter of cream and milk together, I'm gonna to put in a tablespoon of salt. So very, very important that we season the dough from was nicely. There's nothing worse than bland potatoes. Uh, I have some grated nutmeg here. So I'm gonna put in, give or take, about te two teaspoons of the grated nutmeg. Again, lovely spice of Christmas. Uh, we're gonna put in six cloves of garlic. Now it may seem like a lot, but fear not, it'll be full of flavor at the end. And then lastly, just a touch of white or black pepper, just to finish it off. You can add thyme in here if you want, classically. Um, you can have the thyme stalks in, or you can take the leaves off. I've left them out today because not everyone's gonna have it. But if you have that, throw it in. Or any hard herbs like rosemary or anything you might want in there. So what we need to do now is wait for it to come up to the boil, and then we'll go on to the next stage. So it's come up to the boil with our potatoes and what you'll see then is the cream and the milk is slightly thickened from all that starch and then it's very very simple after that. We take out our potatoes, layer them up so we get as many potatoes in layers as we can because what will happen is as it cooks a lot of it will break down and it'll actually fall so if we go slightly above the level by the time that's cooked with everything on top it'll have come down to, to even keel. So we go on top, very very nice. 
Now what we do next is we get a little bit of our excess milk and cream. So obviously there's a lot in this recipe. It'll make a good bit if you're doing a full casserole dish for maybe eight or 10 people at Christmas, there'll be loads there. So we fill it up to just below the level. Again, all the seasoning, everything's in there, nice. And then I'm gonna finish it with some Gruyere cheese. So you can use Gruyere, you can use cheddar, you can use mozzarella, you can use Parmesan, whatever you have. Uh, Gruyere is my favorite. And we're just gonna absolutely pile it on top because we all love caramelized cheese, particularly with potatoes. Again, it all looks quite high, but what will happen is as it cooks down, it'll all compress in on top of each other. And then all we have to do is stick it in the oven at 180 degrees for 40 to 45 minutes. So out of the oven, and then after about 40, 45 minutes, that's what you're gonna be looking at. Perfect for your Christmas day dinner.